Greetings, salutations. Welcome to this midday power surge, Tuesday, June twenty second, two thousand and twenty one. This is your spiritual oasis on this pilgrim journey. Safe to serve international first time viewers. Welcome one. Welcome all to this midday power surge. How many of you received a blessing from yesterday's midday power surge? For me, my friends, it was a great blessing to say the least. And as I was reflecting upon the points that were shared, normally, once I cover a topic, I go over those points to dig deeper. And today is going to be a continuation. One of our principal scriptures from yesterday's midday power surge, as you can see, the title was Depart Now from Iniquity, Transgression, and Sin. There it is, friends. It is done. Give Satan a bill of divorcement. It's time to teach transgressors God's way. That was yesterday. And the principal scripture that mentioned iniquity, transgression and sin was exodus chapter 34 do you recall that exodus 34 verse 5 through verse number 7 friends that was a repetition of the second commandment of exodus chapter 20 and i want to read this text for you because this scripture is going to segue and lead us into part number two of this midday power surge Look at verse number four. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Exodus 20 and verse four. Verse five. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God. Here it is now. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me of them that hate me and that's why you can see on the screen my friends ready or not prepare for the coming Sunday law crisis ready or not prepare prepare for what we are going to encounter hatred from family members hatred from brothers and sisters in the church even this denomination seventh day adventist Yes, prepare, ready or not, we shall encounter hatred from the world. Part number two, can you see it now, my friends? And Jesus says, it's coming. Them that hate me, that's speaking about Christ. I'll come back to that. Verse six, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and what? Keep my commandments. And when you look at God's commandments and hatred, is there a commandment in principle that covers thou shalt not hate? Yes. And that is the sixth commandment. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit murder. Do not kill. And brothers and sisters, as we shall see later on, a hater is a murderer. And I'll dig deeper on that point. However, Jesus says, them that hate me. John chapter 15 and verse number 18, Jesus says, If the world hates you, you know it, it hated me before it hated you. What happened to Christ? We will also encounter great hatred. And here's my point as I segue into a few current events. And then I'm going to return and address the heart, the mind, the character, the spiritual wall. Are we ready, my friends? Now notice, the Bible shows us that when we see these events and inimical policies to combat these crises, the stage is being set for God's people to be hated by the world. Look at Matthew 24. Matthew chapter 24. Note it, my friends. We always quote this. Verse 7 mentions the calamities, the wars, the pestilences, the famine. Verse 8, a time of great sorrow is now at hand. Verse 9, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, 
and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Stop right there in verse 9. Later on, I will return to verse number 10. Is the stage being set? Look at this clip, my friends. This is Andy Slavitt, former White House Pestilence 19 response advisor. Listen to what he said about the pandemic response. Speaking about the issue that we must give up more of our rights to combat the crisis. The stage is being set. And those who refuse to go along with these draconian policies, are they going to be hated? Are they going to be labeled as terrorists because you have refused the government's elixir? The pestilence 19 nostrum? You are causing great casualties. You are causing people to die. You are a terrorist. Brothers and sisters, please, ready or not, let's prepare for this crisis. Listen to this. Clip one, the introduction. We're approaching another solemn moment in the pandemic, the loss of 600,000 lives in America due to the coronavirus. In a new book, a former White House senior advisor for COVID response argues much of this disaster could have been prevented. Andy Slavitt left President Biden's COVID response team just last week after taking on the position in January. His new book offers an up-close look at the crisis and how leaders responded. It's called Preventable, the inside story of how leadership failures, politics, and selfishness doomed the U.S. coronavirus response. And Andy Slavitt joins us. Mm. There he is. So people who refuse to go along with the policies to combat pestilence 19, they are going to be labeled as selfish people. Let me give you a clip right here. Let's go to minute marker 317. Watch this carefully, brothers and sisters. Listen. Fact us. I don't think we are, and I don't think we are for a couple reasons. Um, one is, I think, uh, we need to have a dialogue in this country about, about what matters. Is it more important for us to have our individual liberties, that we don't wear a mask, or should, is there some common good that we should all be, be working towards? I think we'll do a better job. <laughs> Did you catch that, my friends? Did you catch that? Giving up your rights for the common good. I wonder if he is a Roman Catholic. I did not do that research. Just came to my mind. I'm wondering, for the common good, maybe you missed it. Listen. All right, listen to this. And we, we, none of us can do it forever, and it's not pleasant, but, but as they will, the market. So, Andy, in terms of what may happen in the future, do you think that we are ready for another pandemic, which inevitably is going to come and affect us? I don't think we are, and I don't think we are for a couple reasons. Um, one is, I think, uh, we need to have a dialogue in this country about, about what matters. Is it more important for us to have our individual liberties, that we don't wear a mask, or should, is there some common good that we should all be, be working towards? I think we'll do a better job technically. Mm -hmm. I think and my friends, now you just heard the interviewer state that the crisis is going to be perpetuated. It is going to return. Listen to... Andy Slavitt, you know his post, you know what office he held and what he's presently engaged in. He's going to tell us it's coming again. Look at this, brothers and sisters. This is Minute Marker 244. Watch carefully what he said. Listen. Preventing the spread of the disease is really about a couple simple things. Not breathing near one another in large spaces. That's really, that's really it, if you want to be overly simple about it. And that requires a certain amount of sacrifice and change. It's a short period of time, and we, we, none of us can do it forever, and it's not pleasant. But, but when we do, um, we reduce the amount of spread pretty dramatically. And if the variants come back in the fall, as, as, as they will, the people who are unvaccinated really are going to need to pay serious attention to that and consider getting vaccinated because we have some great vaccines on the market. Mm, there it is, friend. And who are they targeting? You can see clearly what was just stated. It's coming again. And brothers and sisters, what are we told in the book, Great Controversy? What are we told in the Bible? As the pestilences continue and become more frequent and more disastrous, will they enforce a law? Will they enforce policies? And those who refuse to go along with those policies, are they going to be hated? Are they going to be afflicted? Are they going to be persecuted? 
my friends, ready or not, the crisis is on foot. Look at this headline, friends, from all different angles. Sunday law coming to combat immorality. Look at the screen, June 21st, 2021. Bring commandments back. There it is, my friends. And they mention all the commandments that they deem needs to be returned. And which one will ultimately be enforced based on the Bible and the spread of prophecy, even based on church history, Sunday rest by law, and great controversy. Page 587 tells us Sunday law will be enforced to combat immorality. Are we here, my friends? I'll give you one more. Here we have now church leaders, so-called faith leaders, pressuring the White House, pressuring Congress to enforce policies to combat climate change. Hmm. Based on God's word of prophecy, what would they pressure government leaders to enforce to combat calamities? Sunday rest by law. We are here. Look at the screen, my friends. It says, headline, faith leaders pressure, strong word, right? Pressure Biden on pipelines and climate policy. There it is, my friends. Climate change to fulfill the moral obligation. And these are not just Catholics, evangelicals, pastors, professors. There it is, my friends, urging the Biden administration and congressional leaders, brothers and sisters, how much clearer can it be? The faith event staged on the National Mall in the foreground of the U.S. Capitol was the start of an escalated, what a word, friends. This thing is on foot, momentous, momentum is building, escalated push by environmental groups to press, to press, to pressure members of Congress and brothers and sisters. What are we told based on God's word of prophecy? Church and faith leaders are going to pressure, influence state leaders to enforce their traditions, their institutions. Is Sunday one of their principal institutions? Look at the screen. Great controversy, page 589. The calamities, pestilences are going to increase. And what will they enforce, my friends? Sunday rest by law. There it is on the screen. Even the Antichrist has said the same. Look at this. It says the leading churches of the United States, uniting upon such points of doctrine as are held by them in common, what will they do? Influence the state. Pressure the state to enforce their decrees and to sustain their institutions. Then what happens, brothers and sisters? The image of the beast will be completely formed. And then comes what, brothers and sisters? Then comes Sunday rest by law with civil penalties. And then comes persecution. That's where we are, brothers and sisters. How close are we? And now we are told in that very statement, Great Controversy, page 590, it simply says, once Sunday law is enforced, beginning in America, then it goes global. Look at the red words at the bottom. It says, what happened in the days of Elijah will be repeated. That's the point, friends. In the time of Elijah, 1 Kings 17 and 1 Kings chapter 18, was there a climate crisis? Yes, there was. And who did they blame? They blamed Elijah. Why? He did not go along with Baal worship and the unification with Jezebel and Ahab. He did not go along with the government's policy. And 1 Kings chapter 18, Ahab labeled Elijah as a troubler of Israel. We will call that today a terrorist of Israel. And look at this quotation now, following this statement on the screen. Acts of the Apostles, page 430. This is the quote now that connects, hold on, that connects 
the coming Sunday law crisis to restore so-called morality, to combat pestilences, to combat famine, to combat calamities, to combat cyber war, other wars, racial division. It's linked to hatred. Those who don't go along with your policy. Here it is, my friends. It says, it was this same hatred that forced the prophet Elijah to flee. There it is, my friends. And that forced the heralds of the gospel to turn from the Jews to proclaim their message to the Gentiles. Listen to what it says, Blue Bird. And this hatred, one more time, my friends, and this hatred, the people of God living in this age have yet to meet. All right. That's Matthew 24. We shall be hated. Listen now. Last sentence. In the great crisis through which they are soon to pass, the faithful servants of God will encounter the same, strong phrase, the same hardness of heart, the same cruel determination, the same unyielding hatred. That's it, friends. Are these points clear from Matthew 24? Look at the next paragraph. Same book. It says, All who in that evil day would fearlessly serve God according to the dictates of conscience will need courage, firmness, and a knowledge of God and His Word. For those who are true to God will be persecuted. Their motives will will be impugned their best efforts misinterpreted and their names cast out as evil what a statement friends so what will they label us as evil men what would they label us my friends as evil people what would they have in their hearts toward us hatred let's finish up blue words at the bottom it says, God desires his people to prepare for the soon coming crisis. Here it is now, friends. This is the phrase in your title. Prepared or unprepared, ready or not, prepared or unprepared, they must meet. They must all meet it. That's it, brothers and sisters. Ready or not, prepared or unprepared, we must all meet this global Hatred against God's people. My friends, now let me put this point in a sure place. So now, since this is ahead of us, we shall be hated by all nations, those in the world. What must Christ do to prepare us for that time? I believe that Christ must will allow us to go through hatred today. Allow us to encounter and see and feel the vehemence from people in, in our family, brothers and sisters in the church. They will hate us as we stand for God. These things God must allow us to encounter to prepare us for this soon coming crisis. And here's my point, friends. If we cannot stand, if we cannot endure, family members hating us brothers and sisters in the church hating us calling us evil calling us offshoots maligning our characters if we cannot stand now we won't stand in the near future and the second point if god can strengthen us and if we can stand now against the hatred of family members and brothers and sisters in the church, then by God's grace, we will be able to stand when all the world hates us. Go back to Matthew 24. Look at it now. In Matthew 24, we read verse 7 through verse 9. And verse 9 says, We shall be hated of all nations for God's name's sake. But what about verse 10? What a, verse 10 says now, the hatred will be found within. Look at verse 10. Bible says, And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall what? And shall hate one another. 
That's it, friends. And verse number, verse number 13 says, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. That's the point. How many of you right now, those of you who are alive, how many of you right now are going through hatred from family members, hatred from brothers and sisters who claim to be in the church of God? How many of you are going through this? God is preparing us for what is to come. As we're standing for God, we are going to have to endure and encounter grave, grotesque hatred from those in the family, those in the household of faith. So don't become discouraged. Fall on your knees. Look at the scripture in Psalm. Look at the scripture. Watch carefully, my friends. The Bible tells us the hatred is coming from our own household. Matthew 24, verse 9, verse 10. Matthew 10, verse 21, verse 22. And Matthew 10, and verse 36. Look at Psalm 55. This is a very emotional scripture. Yes, friends, it hits home. Yes, a nail in a sure place. Verse 12. It says, for it was not an enemy that reproached me. If that were the case, I would be able to bear it. No. It's not an enemy that hated me. No. But it's my friend, verse 13. Who is this? Verse 14, it says, we took sweet counsel together and walked unto the house of God in company. So based on that verse, brothers and sisters, who will be the ones to hate us before the world hates us as we stand for God and his truth? It says in verse 14, those that we took sweet counsel with, those that we walked together to the house of God. There it is, friends. Church people, verse 15, let death seize upon them. Let them go down quick into hell, for wickedness is in their dwellings. And among them, what are we to do now? Look at verse 16. As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord will save me. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud. And what, friends? And God will hear our voices. While brothers and sisters in the church hate us, it's coming, brothers and sisters. Let us prepare. Let us prepare, brothers and sisters. Now, not only those that sit in the pew, but also preachers, also pastors, so-called professors, so-called, yes, yes, friends, so-called evangelists. It's going to happen. Look at this scripture. And again, I know some of you are in the marketplaces. Some of you right now are on the job. While you are tuning in to Midday Power Surge, I want this to be as easy for you to comprehend. Hence, look at the screen. 1 Kings 22 and verse number 8, the Bible says, And the king of Israel, Ahab, said unto Jehoshaphat, there is yet one man, Micaiah, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But Jehoshaphat said, Ahab, I hate him. Whoa, brothers and sisters. So from whom did hatred come for God's prophet, Micaiah? Who, my friends? From a leader in Israel. A leader in Israel. There it is, my friends. But I hate him. Question, so why did Ahab hate Micaiah? Let's read on, blue words at the bottom. But I hate him because, for he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but prophesy evil. Mm, 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 mm. Because Micaiah was calling Ahab to repentance, because Ahab had published publicly his sins and Micaiah even Elijah publicly public sin public rebuke 
was calling them to revival, reformation, repentance, heart conversion. And what happened? The leader despised. The leader hated Micaiah. And the Bible tells us what happened then will be repeated in the last days. So what are we going to encounter, brothers and sisters? Hmm? Expect it. And what I'm sharing with you is my own testimony. And all who live for God will have to endure, will have to encounter persecution. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12 and verse 13. For all that shall live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Amen. Look at this, my friends. It says, don't marvel. My friends, don't marvel. When people in the pews hate you because you're living for God. Do not act and feel as if it is something strange. When leaders in the church, elders, deacons, youth leaders, pathfinder leaders, administrators, pastors, professors, preachers. It doesn't matter. Principles. It doesn't matter. Do not marvel. Because this hatred began with somebody. In whom, those of you are alive, in whom? Did hatred originate in whom? My friends, it originated in Satan. That's it. And who was the first person on the earth? Those of you who are alive, who was the first person on earth that revealed the hatred of Satan? So much so that he slew his brother. Who was that? Those of you who are alive. This was Cain, brothers and sisters. First John, those of you who are alive, thanks for your comments. First John chapter 3, verse 11 through verse 13. The Bible says, my friends, for this is the message that you heard from the beginning. So what you heard in the beginning must be proclaimed in the last days. Verse 12, it says, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one satan and cain slew his brother and why did cain slay abel hmm. his own works were evil and abel's righteous verse 13 marvel not my brethren if the world hate you look at the screen the top of the screen where do we normally see those emojis where do we normally see those on social media expect this in the church in the church don't marvel and friends Cain and Abel worship at the same altar previously Cain and Abel in the same family same family Cain and Abel resided in a rural district country but it seemed as if the country didn't help him Cain to become converted as Adventist home. Page 137 says, And when God made Adam and Eve perfect, he placed them in the Garden of Eden. So imagine you move out to the country with a family member or a brother and sister in the church that you regard and regarded as your family. And yet they are the same ones that stab you in the back. The very ones you prayed with, the very ones you assisted financially, the very ones you gave an opportunity, you gave a livelihood, you assisted them. Directions in life, in ministry, like Cain and Abel, they will hate you. And they will malign your character. And if they could, they would slay you, murder you, as Cain murdered Abel. By the way, that's not the only account. Let me come to those of you who are alive. Talk to me, those of you who are alive. Who else in the Bible was hated by all of his brethren? They hint he had 11 brethren. Who comes to your mind? 11 brethren brothers and sisters this is joseph my friends look thank you thank you thank you it's joseph 
There it is on the screen, my friends. It was Joseph. I don't want to spend much time here. Genesis 37, verse 3 through verse 5. For God's name's sake. And the Bible tells us not only did they despise Joseph, but they actually attempted to slay him if it was not for Reuben and others. All right, friends. All right. Come back here. Come back here and recall the Bible tells us that the descendants of Joseph are going to have archers, sail, point, sling, darts their way. Look at this statement from the Bible. Genesis, watch carefully brothers and sisters. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 22. It says Joseph is a fruitful bough. He's a what? A fruitful bough. Yes, he's bearing fruit. Listen to this. Even a fruitful bough by a well. Hmm. Is he receiving living water? Whose branches run over the wall. That means he is reaching out to others. Evangelism. Look at verse 23 now. The archers have sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him. Yes, friends, the tribe of Joseph will have to encounter this. Anybody going through this, my friends, who are alive? But look at the hope, verse 24. But his bow abode in strength, and the arms of the hands of Joseph were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. There it is, my friends. Will God strengthen us? That's the question. Will God strengthen us? Yes, friends. So prepare for them to, to shot darts at us. Sister White calls it. Sister White calls it. Black balls. Don't brush them off. Don't pay them any attention. You only scar your character. And, and also make your garments look uh, grotesque. Leave the black darts alone. God will strengthen you. It's coming, brothers and sisters. Don't soil your garments. No, don't do that. Look at this, my friends. And in the same context of fiery darts coming at Joseph, great hatred. Those of you who are alive, what is the piece of the armor? Which piece of the armor would you take to yourselves to withstand the archers? that are sailing your direction words of hatred words of disgust calling you evil warning people from you what oh yes thank you so much my friends it's the shield the shield of faith wherewith you will be able to quench all not some all the fiery darts of the wicked that's it friends the fiery darts of the wicked Praise God for all night prayer meeting. There it is, friends. The shield of faith, verse 16 of Ephesians chapter 6. Praise God. Praise God for the day of fasting and prayer. And my friends, the Bible tells us, I want to warn all the haters, all those who are possessed with Satan and by Satan in various families, and no family is going to be excluded. Not even in the circle of Jesus Christ was there not found one possessed with Satan with great hatred. Who was that? Judas Iscariot. So don't marvel when you see people in your own family, your own immediate household. Brothers and sisters in the church possessed, don't marvel. However, I want to speak to such people in this next segment. Those people... Haters, the Bible says you are murderers. Look at the screen, my friends. It says, whosoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you will not be saved. The Bible says, Galatians 5 now, verse 19. The works of the flesh is also, besides adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, it's also hatred. And verse 21 tells us, you're not going to enter into God's kingdom. God 
is warning the haters. Yes, brothers and sisters. And more than that, not only will the haters, the murderers, and which commandment are they violating? Which commandment are they violating? It is commandment number six of the Decalogue. Thou shalt not kill. If you hate your brother, your sister, you are a murderer. Hold on. Do you recall yesterday when we covered, we must depart from iniquity, transgression, and sin? Many of these haters, they are committing iniquity because they belong to the household of faith. They profess to be Christians. They profess to be Seventh-day Adventists. They know it's it is against God's law to harbor, conjure up, cherish, hate for somebody else, and yet they still do it. That is iniquity. Knowing something is wrong and you do it, that is stubbornness. Hold on, stubbornness. Those of you who are alive, which word is synonymous to stubbornness? 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22 Verse 23, what is that word? It is witchcraft. Go back to the screen, Galatians chapter 5. Look at verse 20. The first three words, idolatry, witchcraft. There it is, friends. Hatred. There it is, friends. Iniquity. Iniquity. Not only will they not enter into God's kingdom, the Bible says they will receive the curses of God. I want everyone who has ever committed this sin of hatred to listen attentively, prayerfully. Father in heaven, as we continue, give us more inspiration. We pray that we may search our hearts and depart from iniquity, transgression, and sin is our prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Who on the line, those of you alive, can say, I have never hated someone without a cause. I have never held on and cherished hatred. All of us are guilty. So since all of us have sinned, my friends, listen to this scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Verse 7, the Bible says, And the Lord thy God will put all these curses, underscore that word, all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee. Brothers and sisters, on them that hate thee. Curses. Now what scripture is this? This is Deuteronomy chapter 30. Where did God first mention the curses? Those of you who are alive, put this scripture down. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15 through verse number 68. This is where God first mentioned the curses. And let me say this, my friends. Let's go there. The Bible tells us in verse number 15 of Deuteronomy chapter 28, the curses will come. Verse 16, verse 17, God is going to curse you financially. Curse your garden. Yes. Curse your body. Hear me carefully. One of the reasons why some people, a group of people, are always sick, always in various crises, it is because they have held on to hatred. They are filled with hate for somebody else. Now, there is a group of people who have and are encountering a Job experience. All right. Yes, many are suffering because it is providential, as in Job chapter 1 and Job 2. But let me be clear, brothers and sisters, there is another class that are suffering deeply, Grave suffering because of hate in their hearts. Yes, and they will not surrender. They will never get ahead. Yes, they are sickly. Yes, I'm telling you, that's what the Bible says. Look with me. Verse number 22, the curse. Verse 21, the curse. 
consumption, the curse. Wait a minute. Go over now to verse number 27. Cancer, verse 27, the botch of Egypt. Emeralds, hemorrhoids, the itch. Yes, verse 28, madness. They're always confused. My friends, the Bible says in verse 28, blindness, astonishment of heart. Verse 29, you will grope in darkness. Why are these people sick, gravely sick, and they cannot seem to be getting better? It's because of their heart condition. Their mind is corrupt, and they know better, but they are stubborn, rebellious, committing iniquity. Beware, you haters, and those filled with hate. You can read the rest of that. I'm not casting condemnation upon people. All of us have sinned. You could read the rest of that. Look at the screen. And the Bible says, brothers and sisters, watch carefully. In verse number 9 of 1 John 2, it says, Those who hate their brother are also in darkness, even until now. Just as Deuteronomy 28 and verse number 28 and 29. My friends, those of you who are alive, what does God call the curse? The curse also points to the plagues. And one of the seven last plagues, by the way, the fifth plague, the Bible calls it darkness. Revelation chapter 16. Darkness, friends. God is calling us to depart. That's verse number 10 and verse number 11 of Revelation 16. Darkness. And God is calling us to revival, repentance, reformation. Yes, brothers and sisters. Yes, it's time for self-examination. The plagues, the curses. The world calls it karma. Karma. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. The same way you judge, you'll be judged. What you meet unto others will be meted, measured unto you. That's what the Bible calls it. What the world calls it karma. And friends, one of the greatest warnings to those haters is this. Many of them are going to die with hate in their hearts. And the scripture I'm going to share with you is a text we normally quote when we're giving a Bible study on the state of the dead. What is that principle scripture? Here it is. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Look at this, friends. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. And look with me at verse number 5. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Let's read on. Neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Verse 6. Also, their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. We are told, my friends, that the very condition that they die with is the very condition they will rise with. They die. If you die with love in your heart, you will be saved. If you die with hatred and envy, you die lost. You die lost. What is God saying to us, my friends? And the judgment has set in the judgment are we living in the time of judgment are we going to be judged are we going to be examined brothers and sisters yes how shall we stand in that great day how shall we stand look at this statement here my friends volume 4 page 384 speaking about watch carefully friends speaking about the judgment and the books are opened. It says, another book was opened wherein were recorded the sins of those who profess the truth. Hmm. Who are these people? Let's read on. Under the general heading of selfishness came every other sin. Hmm? There were also headings over every column. And underneath these opposite each name were recorded 
in their respective columns the lesser sins. Let's read on. On the covetousness came falsehood, theft, robbery, fraud, and avarice. On the ambition came pride and extravagance. Jealousy, watch carefully, jealousy stood at the head of malice, envy, and hatred. My friends, one more time. Jealousy stood at the head of malice, envy, and hatred. Think about that. So what is at the root cause of malice, envy, and hatred? It is jealousy, 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 jealousy. Let's read on. Intemperance headed a long list of fearful crimes, such as lasciviousness, adult, adultery, indulgence of animal passions, etc. Sister White writes, as I beheld, I was filled with inexpressible anguish and exclaimed, who can be saved? Who will stand justified before God? Whose robes are spotless? Who are faultless in the sight of a pure and holy God? Who can be saved? Who will stand justified before God? Who shall stand? Who shall stand? Send in your prayer requests, my friends. The song, Sister Henriquez, laid upon our hearts for today is simply my friends the judgment has set the books have been opened how shall we stand in that great day how shall we stand friends how shall you stand how shall i stand but praise god if we get victory and depart from iniquity transgression and sin by God's grace because he hit the mark we will be able to stand Revelation 6 verse 17 Revelation 7 verse 1 through 4 we have the seal of God in our foreheads and those with that seal depart from iniquity 2 Timothy 2 and verse 19 that which we know is wrong we're not rebellious in doing those things Praise God. How shall we stand in this judgment hour? Listen, friends. Listen.
Yeah.